Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show and you guys voted. So let's talk about the Cleveland Show for this community voted review. For this video, I have two shout outs. I wanna shout out first at the Generalist on Twitter. I've been seeing his art and this art piece here is one of his most recent. I've seen other people I follow like his stuff but I never got around to it and I really wish I did sooner. Please check him out with the link to his art piece down below and give it lots of love, lots of retweets and tell him I sent you. The other shout out I wanna give is to the patrons that recently supported me on Patreon. I didn't know how that particular shout out on the last video was going to go down, but I'm really glad that some people wanted to support what I'm doing and I'll make sure to give you the content that you enjoy. So let's get into it. So as you probably saw from either the title or thumbnail, this isn't going to be a positive review, which after doing two very critical episodes, I do think it's long overdue, at least for my style, but with the Cleveland show, I don't see too many people talking about it and I didn't necessarily want to tear into the show as I think I could do something a bit better. Usually with my very negative reviews, they're generally based around a character being very unlikable or hypocritical towards the story. But here, sometimes an episode can just have most of the pieces together but still be pretty boring, lacking or uninspired. And this is one of those episodes. And I'll show you what I mean by that. The beginning of this episode sets up the town of Stoolben having a big baseball culture. As during the implied season, Cleveland and his family are met with praise to which the opening shots and music in the beginning which plays a version of the opening theme song melody is pretty cool it's a pretty good way to open especially for what's about to come a big problem i have with the cleveland show is not just the comedy not just the seth mcfarland formula watered down from its original watering down that would come from the main show around this point it's also just cleveland himself he never seemed to escape the role of being a side character from family guy and like with planet sheen for instance it went to show that he was much more beneficial being the side man to a much more interesting character. Although he has motivations, flaws, interests, and unique relationships, things that are really good for characters to have, he ultimately treads the line of being very boring, uninspired, and paint by numbers slash cookie cutter in the sense of how episodes portray him as. And don't worry, we'll talk about how the Cleveland show deals with race in another review. And to be fair, this isn't a full out Cleveland episode, but his problems linger here as well. His buddy Lester makes a pro-age joke and a Madonna joke. Tim the Bear wants Raymond to be in the game more, but because he's unable to see that his son is a constant stoner and extremely slow in terms of reactions, he doesn't recognize that his son would be a terrible asset to any high-intensity game, and Colt gets made fun of for being short. Cleveland then gets a surprise. Who is that? Chet Butler. My longtime rival that you're just hearing about now for the first time. That dirty play in SOB purposely beamed me and knocked me out of the game, costing us the championship. That's kind of the problem that we're just hearing about it now. You see, in a lot of other shows, one-off characters sort of have the uphill battle of getting you to care so that you are invested in the episode or at least invested in the main character winning. However, most likely because of the viewpoint of adult animation, this guy is just assumed to be bad for beaming a ball at Cleveland's head. To which, since this is for my demographic, you know, being adult animation and all, I have to challenge if we should trust Cleveland, knowing that he lies about things often, including in this episode. Even if we were to make that case, the fact that nothing came about it, or the fact that he's only truly just kind of a jerk with what he says, isn't really enough for me to care about Cleveland beating him in baseball. He's not a jerk to the town, or other people, and in this episode, he doesn't beam or get a kid to beam a ball creating a full circle, he's just an antagonist to Cleveland. And we are supposed to back Cleveland because he's the main character. And it's sad to say, but you can kind of see why he never really left the Peter's black friend category for me, at least with this episode. The side plot is pretty much Cleveland Brown Jr. not taking shop class seriously and finding out that he will fail a class that actually does count against his grade. Again, we're supposed to care after he made fun of the teacher not having thumbs. That's your project? Who cares? It's shop. It's not like a real class. Not a real class? I'm sorry. 
I didn't see you, Mr. Thumbs. <gasps> That's what we call him behind his back. And we want him to pass said class that he didn't care about if he knew he wasn't making a grade. Honestly, casually watching, I tend to gloss over watching the Cleveland show from a television perspective. Adult Swim for any foreign audience who may have a different because it's between other shows that I enjoy. I get that this is the second season and that if people didn't care for Cleveland, they would have stopped watching. But bear in mind, pun, that this is an episodic show. And because of that, the argument doesn't fully work. I don't expect people to care about Steven Universe, TMNT, or Adventure Time in their deeper seasons right away because they have a heavy story to catch up on. But if you were to show me an episode of Spongebob, American Dad, or even Family Guy, I usually don't need to watch the early seasons to care about the characters. It's not even like Family Guy, where the characters are so bad that you can care enough to not like them, and possibly root for them to fail, get hurt, or see how messed up they can get without going over the sensors, of course. So during a baseball game, the commentators inform us that the core reason they are winning is because of their star pitcher. And because star pitcher, the core reason the dog that was recently bit by a raccoon and let out on the field goes after the star pitcher, ripping him to shreds like a bad argument. And... He's my dog. I'll take care of it. I can't watch. Goodbye, Sparky. Oh, my patella! <laughs> He gets no repercussions for shooting this guy in the leg. In fact, he does something that society says is worse, but I would make a case that this is worse because the entire crowd sees this and does nothing. He doesn't even apologize. They just leave him bleeding on the ground. Cleveland doesn't even appear to care so much. Lester, the guy behind the pro-AIDS campaign, joke or not, complains that he has a lot riding on this. Will he die? Will his house be taken away? Will someone see him differently? I don't know. He just has a lot riding on this. And it's funny because all all you need for someone to care is just to let them know exactly what the character means about that. Earlier with the rival captain, why did he beam the ball into Cleveland's head? Right here, what exactly does Lester have writing on this? I know they have the time because they show a lot of edgy humor and I guess that's what we should come to the Cleveland show for. It's essentially just a CSC plus family guy. Move it kid. Haha, <laughs> oh looks like a kid. Wait a minute. Hmm? We don't even get why Colt wants to do this. Aside from one line earlier saying that he would do anything, so I guess, hooray Colt? So we get Donna finding out and we get to one of the best examples I can give to express exactly why this episode doesn't work for me. Donna storms over to Cleveland, clearly upset, and this happens. What the hell is going on? Cheating to get to state. I didn't hear that. I said cheating to get to- Cleveland, I heard you. She comes back during the end and she clearly knew beforehand, otherwise she'd be confused, not upset. So why come up to Cleveland to not only hear what you already knew, but then give such an underwhelming response? She doesn't even tell Cleveland to stop or to keep going or that her job would be ruined if he continued. She essentially becomes apathetic. She doesn't want to hear and therefore I cannot fault the audience for not wanting to either. I mean, with certain entertainment like animation, it could be amplified, right? Depending on the intent. With American Dad or Family Guy, the stakes are high because that's entertaining to watch. And now some may point out Bob's Burgers or King of the Hill, and to that I say, they tell and show better reactions. My point with all of this is that no one in the episode really shows that they care. And this comes across like no one wants to be there, but an episode has to come out because of their contract. Cleveland is supposed to be rooted for because he's the main character. Main character is supposed to win against against antagonist. Antagonist is bad because antagonist. Star pitcher goes down because tension. Like where is the human aspect to any of this? You know you made a generic episode when I can essentially just replace all of the characters with characters of any other show and it'll make just as much sense. Don't believe me? Watch. In another episode of Spongebob, Squilliam and his rival team from across the road battle in the annual Bikini Bottom Snail Ball with Squidward. Plankton disguises as a child and because of his gadgets, gets the entire team ahead. Spongebob finds out and Squidward has to face the choice of whether or not he wants to go through with it at the end. Gumball and his school face the rival school blah and Bobbert, their star pitcher, goes down because it's raining. They replace him with Rocky disguised as a child to which Darwin finds out and Gumball or Principal Brown have a choice of whether to go through with it or not. Joe runs a baseball team with the local school and faces a rival team of former inmate blah and due to their star pitcher blah going down they decide 
disguise Quagmire or whoever as a teen to fill in his place. Heck, you can even have Chris be the obvious bad member of the team the way that Raymond in this episode is. Obvious replacement gets them to blah, and we get a little bit of the side plot where Cleveland Jr. is getting the hang of shock. <gasps> no, uh nuh -uh. no, you did not. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. In my last video on Nickelodeon and Nicktoons, there was a part where I pretty much struggled with saying Kuku Harajuku, and I decided to leave in my genuine mess ups because sometimes I do that as a joke. Here, I feel like the voice actor was trying to get into the mood of what Cleveland Jr. would sound like, but fails because everyone in this episode is on the spectrum of bored. We do get something because I do want to give this episode some credit, Tim being the honest bear would not approve of such an immoral action, that action being cheating, so they have to keep the secret from him, but because tension, he finds out in the next scene. Sorry Cleveland, but cheating is morally wrong. Sorry, I have no choice but to report this. Ow! What the? Hey man, cut it out! That's a, that, that's a shovel, you know? Where will you go? Down. Okay, okay, seriously, Lester is getting really annoying. This causes Kendra, Lester's wife, to actually knock out Tim. Cleveland finally shows some emotion, and it only took about 13 minutes into the episode for him to actually give a reaction worth watching. If it sounds like I'm breezing over the episode too fast, that is because a lot of this would just be me describing what happens, or explaining that their humor is humorless. But I guess I'll give it the old demonetized shot. <laughs> doesn't feel right. Like a vegan barbecue. Ugh, all right, I'll bite. Hell did that go, Cleveland? <laughs> ah! Smell that? That's meat burning. Oh God, that smells so good. Have you ever seen someone troll for so long that after a while, their jabs are not even impactful anymore? That's really the entire Seth MacFarlane line, but that's a future video. We get a call to an ending joke where Colt pretty much joins this musical because Rent or whatever other references they stuffed in here. We don't even get Colt's side of this story because that would have given us a specific reason to care. And this episode already has all of those offensive jokes. So substance. Dad? Why are you addressing that little boy? Wait, why are you in the lockers? What sport do you play? Sawdust Snowflake? What, you thought I was gonna make a joke about his weight? Fat chance of that. Besides, this episode already has enough of that kind of humor, so if that's your cup of tea, and you think it's better than Family Guy, well then there you go. Cleveland Jr. sees his dad cheating, and because Cleveland wants to win, Cleveland Jr. models after him by switching the names of his project with the grandfather clock that his friend made. Tim comes back into the picture, as well as the shooter here, and I'm just gonna hurry this up because we don't have all day. Cleveland finds out in the next scene that Cleveland Jr. also cheated, and to not pull a double standard, he lets Colt go in favor of Raymond. Tim isn't mad that he was knocked out because his loser of a son pretty much lost the game for them. Oh, and here's the best part. He may have the ring and the championship, but I have the comfort of a clear conscience. I did a great thing here today. Not really. You cheated to get to the championship and then you wussed out and didn't go through with it at the end. You realize you eliminated three deserving teams from contention? So this entire episode was pretty much for nothing. You don't care that he did the right thing at the end. It is shown that Donna saved Cleveland Jr. from facing his consequences. Tim doesn't care for being knocked out again. Rollo and Roberta don't really do anything. And this episode screams basic, boring, and better check out the other two much better Seth MacFarlane animations. Overall, this is a great example of how to make a cartoon episode boring. I would not recommend this episode unless you actually enjoy the Cleveland show, and even in that case, it still appears as a run-of-the-mill episode. There is so much better, and so much worse. It's hard to make a review of a boring episode engaging, but I felt like I did my best, and I did want to talk about an episode that's boring and explain why it's boring. Anyway, make sure to vote in my community poll for the next community voted review. All of my future polls about any of my future videos will be there. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Follow me at the Alpha J Show and go into my request video for anything that you think I should cover that is not in my pinned tweet. If you really like this video, you should check out my Running Mates review for more on the Seth line of reviews. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon as always. I hope your time is well spent and Alpha out.